Yes guys, how's it going and welcome back to a very honest review of Gran Turismo 7. There's a game that I've been playing basically for the entire weekend now and I've got a pretty good understanding of what it's like and whether you should buy it or not. So, anyways, jumping into this, the first thing we did was go into this uh, music rally, as it was called. It's basically like time trial from the old GT games, but it's just with music. And uh, I know you can't hear much in the background, I'll give you a little taste soon. But yeah, this is basically you jump in a car and then you go around a track with the time ticking away. And whenever you hit a checkpoint, then the time goes uh, a bit higher. And instead of seconds, they're measured in music beats, which I found pretty nice. I completed all of these and that was overall a pretty nice experience. But yes, this was the first challenge I did and this is something that you can do while the game is still downloading. But now I'll give you a little lesson of what it was like. So that was the music rally, one of the new features in this game, and now we're moving on to another new feature in this game, which is basically the backbone of this entire game. It's a cafe, uh, you complete challenges, they give you missions, you keep complete these missions, you, then you get cars, and then you get lectured about those cars, which I think is pretty cool, and then you also end up earning those cars as well, and racing for them. So, as you can see here, here I'm getting a little lecture on hot hatchbacks from Europe, and that's basically it. So what I did here was that I I competed, competed in races and then after competing in those races I got cars for uh, doing well in those races and then that completed the cafe challenges. So that's pretty cool. The feature I was most excited for in this game was the introduction of GT Auto back into the game. So you can see here I'm adjusting my little Mazda Miata to have an absolutely MASSIVE rear wing, but another thing that has changed is that you no longer use mileage points to purchase uh, paints along with other things, you use real money, your hard earned cash in the game. So as you can see here I'm looking at some colors to paint my car with, I take that matte purple, buy it for 1k and now I have that. And also we're gonna have more custom parts here, we go for some racing items. You can add a tow hook to your car, which I think is quite a nice touch. Also, a roll cage. These are new to any Gran Turismo, and I think that is a very nice feature. We add a nice little roll cage here. It already looks like a race car, doesn't it, to you? So, I love that touch. Nice, nicely done by Polophony to add GT Auto back into the game and make it so diverse, so that you can customize basically anything. Another new thing in Gran Turismo 7 is the gifts. Instead of uh, getting a car, for your daily workout you have a chance of getting either money, a car or other kind of tuning parts. You can see I have nitrous or suspension kit here and surprise surprise we will be getting the money. It's rigged that way for me at least. I constantly keep on getting money. But anyway that's pretty cool to spice up the uh, roulette thing with the cars. Now undoubtedly the biggest talking point of the game is these graphics. I mean just look at these. Uh, I had enabled ray tracing on my PlayStation 5 and you can really see how it's working out. Just look how beautiful that is. These are clips taken, these little um, uh, cutscenes before you enter a championship and I must say that they are very cool. I mean you can really see the ray trace being put into work here. And also not just with the scenery, also with the cars. The attention to detail on these is absolutely crazy. I mean, look at the reflection of the side of that Supra and it, it's just... Words can't describe how excited I, I was when I first saw these and how vibrant the colors are as well. Uh, the PlayStation is doing a very good job in really popping out these colors and cars and emphasizing the color factor in them. And here we have a city view. We had a uh, 
mountainous range view we had some cars and now we have a city and they just nail the city look at those windows there's the reflection that is ray tracing at its finest and all of these little details you can see those cars in that little parking house on your on the bottom of your screen and all of these just little touches that make it that bit better and i have to say this is one of if not the best gran turismo game ever released Moving on to the gameplay itself, so I am here at a new track with a new car with the Ford GT 2018 model around Daytona to discuss AI behavior and gameplay itself. If you look up ahead you can see three, three wide, the AI are going into the bus stop and the Porsche just loses it and spins off. You might recognize that spin from a video I posted a couple days ago with just pure gameplay and now we're just rediscussing that. So AI behavior, they are much more aggressive than they were in the previous games and also gameplay there's a whole new handling model and i must say that it feels quite nice you can no longer floor it out the corner and get away with it you actually have to do some throttle management so they have gone away from this kind of arcade feel to the video game they're going for more more of a racing simulator and again you can see those uh this rtx ray tracing going absolutely crazy there with the uh sun reflection too straight to my eyes but that is not not what we're discussing here. We are discussing the gameplay. So they have, like I said, they had gone for a bit of a uh, simulator feel, much more of a simulator feel than it was in previous games. You can see my I have to manage my throttle like crazy before exiting the corner, or else I'll just simply spin. And yeah, that's one part that I find very cool in this game, and I like the fact that it's no longer so arcadey as it was previously. For those of you who like hunting easter eggs in this game, they, if you remember there used to be the Loch Ness Monster in Child Mountain in this little lake if you go to photo mode, but it's no longer there, which is rather sad in my opinion, so I haven't found any other easter eggs yet, but the Loch Ness Monster is a bust. Now this is a spoiler, so if you want to know what you get from when you complete all the license tests, and if you don't look away now, so you get an Audi R8 Evo from 2019, for completing the S license in the game and that's a pretty cool car in my opinion they have added that uh, new one the EVO version to this Gran Turismo 7 video game and along with that for completing all gold you get the Red Bull X 2019 competition that car is crazy quick around 805 brake horsepower and weighing only 605 kilos 650 sorry kilos and yep it's pretty fast that's all I can say having driven it and that is what you get for completing S license. From one big change to another, we have the rain physics. I don't have any gameplay for you, but I have these cool screenshots from other people that I have now implemented into this video. But the rain physics just feel much more realistic than they did in GT Sport. Mainly because you can actually aquaplane over the water, which I find very cool. And also the weather variability. Is also very nice you have a new weather radar on the bottom right of your screen when you race on the MFD which shows some rain showers or rain storms on the way while you race which is going to be interesting and a bit tough also for the new player I realize that myself I'm having a bit of trouble in the rain just because of the sheer aquaplane because I hit a puddle and then it totally offsettles the car and I'm in a wall. So that's definitely something that you need to get used to. But once you're used to it, it's very cool. I like it a lot. Final few things before we end the video. Just some commonly asked questions. Which I'll be giving answers to here. So, uh, is it better than GT Sport? Absolutely. Uh, is it better to drive on wheel than on controller? I would say so. Yes, wheel is much better than controller. Or especially on this game. But even if you are on controller, you can manage the car. Quite nice, but at least I can, don't know about you, but I managed to find a way to keep the car steady under control at all times, even on controller. The credits are well balanced as to how much the cars cost in the game, so it is a fair amount that GT Sport charges for the cars that you're buying com com compared to the amount that you earn from races, so at the start you won't be earning much, so you can buy those tiny uh, not-so-good cars. And the more you progress, the more money you get from races, the better cars you can buy. So I think the credit system is the most balanced it has been in a long time. And there's kind of a collector's feel to this game. So it's not like on GT Sport where you just buy a car, tune it, and then it's done. It's more of like you can choose and there's much more customizability 
to how the cars work in this game so that's another part that I like about it a lot and to be honest I can't think of much negative things about this game it's it's all positive in my opinion the graphics are great the car selection is great 422 cars to choose from with millions of unique with the GT Auto shop the tuning shop and the brand central itself there are millions of combinations of different cars you can make GT7 does also include this used car dealership that we had I think last seen on Gran Turismo 5 where every 24 hours it resets and you have a, an option a tray of quite a few different cars that you can choose from and you, you just buy them for a lower price you have to of course do some maintenance with them in GT Auto but overall I think it's pretty nice if you want to get a car for a bit of cheaper price then damage model you saw a little incident there a bit earlier as I slammed to the back of that Mustang so it hadn't changed much more particles fly out the car but the car still stays intact in one piece like it has been since the pretty much the start of the game uh, no, so not much has changed there so then overall verdict would be a solid 9.5 out of 10 from me let me know what you think in the comments this is a great game I sincerely enjoy this so much such a big step up from GT's sport and 6 as well and I honestly can't think about much negatives except for the damage model and maybe it's not uh, absolutely necessary but they could add some safety cars into this to just spice some races up but those are the only two negative things I can think of about this game everything else is just purely positive and with that being said that's gonna wrap it up today I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one goodbye